Hi, uh, good day brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Angelo Canduba once again. And this is our 16th uh, devotional recording. And uh, today is Thursday. And uh, we're still on our uh, Holy Week. Uh, some call it Passion Week. And um, like what I said yesterday, most of the people are celebrating this as a religious holiday. And... Uh, as Christians, we must uh, remember what Christ did more than 2,000 years ago when He uh, died on the cross, was buried, and rose again after three days. And what transpired the week before His crucifixion, or the, the f- a few days before His crucifixion. So, uh, let's all bow down and let us pray. Father, we thank You for this day. Thank You for allowing us, Lord, once again to... Uh, breathe and uh, live with all your graces your provision your mercy and protection father god we thank you lord for this opportunity that we can study once again the truth of your word we pray for wisdom and knowledge guidance and uh, we pray lord god that you give us a humble heart lord so that we will be able to uh, learn from you lord god in all humility and put it into practice lord whatever we've learned we thank you for everything in jesus name we pray amen so it's uh, thursday and some people call this day and the holy week as monday thursday hindi monday thursday yung monday m-a-u-n-d-y and di ko nakalimut ako sa tagalog no sa o spanish pa ang gamit ng mga pilipino pag um, monday thursday pero uh ngayon monday thursday so tignan natin ano bang significance ito sa Passion Week or sa Holy Week na tinatawag. Uh, yung Monday po, M-A-U-N-D-Y, is uh, coined from a Latin word na ang, kom- ang kan- uh, translation po is command. Command. No? O commandment. So, kinuha yon and then ginamit siya para i-commemorate ano ba yung commandment na binigay ni Christ during this day na sinelebrate nila Jesus Christ ang kanilang mga 12 disciples ang Last Supper at uh, nakikita natin may commandment na binigay si Christ doon at uh, babasahin natin doon sa text natin yun so dalawa yung text natin yun and the first one is in Luke chapter 22 verse 19 to 20 basahin ko po muna verse, 20, uh, verse 19 and he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So ito po yung isang significant na pangyayari ng araw na yon. Ang pag-celebrate niya ng, ng Passover meal at ang pagpira-peraso ni Cristo ng tinapay at pag bahagi niya ng alak sa kanyang mga disipulo. Pangalawa pong verse natin eh, or text eh, makita natin in John chapter 13 verse 3 to 17. Masahin ko po muna. Ito medyo mahaba-haba po. Verse 3. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under His power and that He had come from God and was returning to God. So He got up from the meal, took off His outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around His waist. After that, He poured water in a basin and began, began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am, what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part of me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. Verse 12, When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Verse 14. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. 
I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will, ble- you will be blessed if you do them. Pagpala yung pagkabasa ng salita ng Diyos. Ito pong uh, pag-aaral natin ngayon no, ay nakatutok nga po sa understanding natin sa mga days ng pa- Passion Week. No? Especially ito ngayong araw na to, yung Monday, Thursday. Bakit siya tinawag Monday? Because it's, uh, sabi ko kanina, no? uh, commemorating yung command na binigay ni Christ from the Latin word. Uh, ang katumbas ay command uh, yung Monday. So, ano pong significance nito sa ating buhay mga Kristiyano? Gusto muna makita natin dito in establish ni Christ in the uh, Lord's Supper in the Passover Supper na ginawa nila ito po yung pagpapakita that He is the Savior of the world He is the one who who will pay for the sins of the world at pagpapakita po ito na Siya po ang tagapagligtas ng mundo at wala na pong iba at pagpapakita rin po ito na kung sino po ang mag- mananampalataya sa Kanya who will partake of His flesh and His blood sila po yung merong uh, mata- sila po yung matatawag na totoong ligtas at totoong mga anak ng Diyos. So what does it mean to partake? Uh, symbolism po yung ginawa ni Christ, no? yung tinapay, no? piniraspiraso na sinisimbolize ito yung katawan niya, na ito ay uh, ma- magkakawasak-wasak baga, sa latigo, sa pagkakapako, sa pagkakakulpi sa kanya. So basically, sa Isaiah sabi nun, the Lord or God crushed him God crushed his son no dahil sa iniquity ng mga tao at yun po nangyari no his body was uh, crucified at yun po yung sinisignify ng pagpirapiraso niya ng uh, tinapay at ito yung binigay niya sabi niya do this in remembrance of me in the same way sa verse 20 naman ng Luke 22 after the supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you new covenant in my blood na kung dati in the Old Testament Passover it was the blood of the lamb na ginagamit upang pangpahid dun sa lamb, uh, door post para sila hindi maapektuhan ng uh, angel of death ngayon po sa panahon ni Kristo no, dugo niya yung tumigis na nagbayad ng ating mga kasalanan. At bakit ito pinigay din? Kagaya ng simbolismo ng kanyang katawan na kailangan kainin, ito naman ay kailangan inumin. Sapagat ito po yung pagpapakita ng pananampalataya. Pagpapakita that you are partaking of my um, lordship, of my salvation that I'm giving you. Hindi ito uh, simpleng bagay lamang sapagat may significance ito sa buhay ng mga uh, disipulo dahil nung Si Judas na po, uh, basahin po natin, no? Luke chapter 22. Uh, basahin po natin. Sa verse, ano po? Verse 21. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. So, meron pong magtatraidor. No? Bakit po? Ito po si Judas, eh, masasabing matagal ng kasama ni Kristo. Three years din, narinig niya lahat at nakita niya lahat ang ministeryo ni Kristo. Pero hindi po siya nagpartake. Hindi siya, uh, kumbaga, naging involved kay Christ. Maaring nandun siya sa hapag, maaring kumain siya at uminom, pero hindi siya nananampalataya sa saving grace na ginawa ni Kristo. Paano po natin ito makikita? Uh, sa verse, ano po, no? Um, pupunta po tayo ngayon sa uh, John. Punta po tayo sa John. Chapter 13. So verse uh Punta po tayo sa verse um, 21 After he had said this Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified Very truly I tell you one of you is going to betray me 
His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining to him. Simon Peter motioned to, his, to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. But not at the meal, uh, uh, but not, but no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival, or to give something to the poor. As soon as Jesus had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. Nakita po natin, oh, he took the bread. Well, hindi minensyo, nakinain niya, basta uh, it could be understood na if it is taken, no? Hindi lang naman niya hahawakan at ibubulsa. But there is a kumbaga, sense of urgency to leave the place. Hindi kagaya ng mga disipulo na uh, mga kap, uh, yung mga kasama niya na uh, tawag dito, um, wants to spend more time with Christ. Uh, this could also be understood as, eh, inutusan siya ni Kristo eh. Meron siyang dapat gawin eh. Pero kahit pa, may kita natin na uh, sa mga pananalita ni Christ na ito na yung huling gabi, ito na yung uh, bago ako mag-suffer, uh, binanggit na yon habang sila ay kumakain, at uh, he will suffer uh, unto death, no? Uh, Iniimplon sa kanyang mga pananalita. I think, uh, bilang isang faithful na tagasunod ni Kristo, eh, baka magdalawang isip man lang siya. Pero at this point of time, dire-diretso lang siyang umalis at iniwala niya si Kristo. Ano pong may kita natin dito, no? Ang pagliligtas ni Kristo ay para sa mga tao na pinili po niya. Yung pinili niyang manampalataya sa kanya. Yung mga tao na niligtas niya at kanyang kinilala. Hindi lang basta tao na nagpo-profess ng pananampalataya pero wala naman talagang pananampalataya kay Kristo. Who enjoys the benefit of Christ but doesn't partake of His suffering. nag enjoy lang na um, maka-fellowship or... Uh, masabing associated kay Christ pero kapag dating na sa bagay na uh, yung commandments ni Christ para gawin eh hindi na bumagawa so merong kagaya sa mga disipulo ito merong pong totoong disipulo at merong peke may hudas kumbaga pero tandaan po natin dalawang klase po ang nagbetray dito kay Christ on chapter 13 ng John in verse uh, uh, verse 36, sabi, Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Ngayon, ang pinagkaiba po nila, si Jesus Christ, e eh, kilala niya yung sa kanya, na mananatili sa kanya sapagkat siya ang nagpapanatili. Siya po ang nagsabi mismo kay uh, Peter na uh, siya ay susubukin sa tanas. No? Siya ay magkakaranas ng pagsubok sa kanyang pananampalataya kay Kristo. Pero si Judas po, napaka-terminal po ang terminology na binigay. Kita natin doon, ang sabi eh, uh, gawin mo na yung kailangan mong gawin. <laughs> no? Pero si Uh, Peter ay eh, binigyan siya ng warning and in fact, uh, hindi lang yun ang warning na binigay niya pero mas malinaw po ang pagkakasabi po niya dito sa um, verse uh, Luke chapter 22, balik tayo patalong-talong po tayo sa Luke at sa John no? Luke 22 tayo ulit sa uh, verses uh, Verse 31, sabi po sa Luke 22:31, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me, deny three times that you know me. 
grabe po yung pagkaka uh, bigay dito ng pahayag ni Kristo kay Pedro mismo na pinagmamalaki niya hindi kita iwan hanggang kamatayan hanggang kulungan isasama ko sa iyo pero nalalaman ni Kristo ang pagbagsak ng kanyang mga hinirang at siya rin ang nagpapanatili sa kanya. Sabi din sa verse 32, But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. Ang kinaiba po kay Judas, he was given over to his uh, devices, to his uh, sins. Yung pong kakaiba, no? Pagkat nalalaman ni Christ Jesus kung sino talaga yung sa kanya at sino talaga yung nananampalataya sa kanya. Tignan po tayo. Uh, p- balik po tayo sa uh, John chapter 13. Babasahin ko po yung verse 1. Ang sabi po dito, It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Nakita po natin dito may pag-ibig si Kristo sa kanyang mga hinirang. Yung para sa kanya. Sabi sa uh, at, uh, chapter 13 verse uh, 1, Uh, see, having loved his own. Sino po yun? Yung minahal niya na sa kanya. Yung uh, pag-aari niya, kumbaga, yung hinirang niya. Na nasaan? Na nasa mundong ito. Who were in the world. He loved them to the end. At ito, pinag-aralan natin what it means. That God, that Jesus Christ loved those he, uh, he own. Yung pinag- pag-aari niya, yung hinirang niya, those who he has chosen to the end, meaning, uh, yung word na Greek uh, which is uh, teleo or telos which means to the max to the maximum or in completion that yung pag-ibig ng Diyos eh nakumpleto na fulfill unto salvation not the kind of love that he offered uh, for the whole world na yung pag-ibig ng biyaya ng Panginoon na siya ay bumaba sa mundong ito yun po yung tinatawag natin na common grace. Jesus Christ came to the world not for the well, but for the sick. Yung may mga sakit, yung may mga makasalanan. At ito po ay sinabi po sa John chapter 3, uh, verse uh, 17 for, uh, misahin po natin na John chapter 3, verse 17. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. And that's the uh, display of God's love. Na hindi winasak ng Diyos ang mundong ito. Ngunit sinayad niya si Christ para iligtas ang mundo. Yung mundo ba, ibig sabihin ay lahat ng tao? Maligtas? Yes, uh, mag-agree uh, tayo da. Naligtas ang buong mundo by, by God's grace and love by sending His Son. But that salvation is temporal. Sa madaling salita, hindi winasak ang mundo sa pagbaba ni Kristo bagkos niligtas niya muna ito. Niligtas niya sino? Yung kanyang mga hinirang who are in the world. So ang display ng love ng God uh, through Christ Jesus is by not destroying the world through His Son but by sending His Son to pay for the sins of the world. Not the sins of Jupiter, not the, sen- the sins of Venus or Mars or Neptune or Saturn, but the sins of the world, of this earth, kung saan nandoon ang kanyang mga taong nilikha, ang kanyang mga hinirang, ang kanyang mga niligtas. At yun po ang pagpapakita ng totoong pag-ibig ni Kristo. Hindi po ito generic lang na pag-ibig, but this time this is a salvific love, a love that la- leads to salvation. Nakikita natin, uh, those he loved, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. But not everyone. Example po sa uh, 12 disciples, not everyone was loved to the end. Judas betrayed Christ and also Peter. But one of them is not loved to the end. Sino mas minahal ng Panginoon to the end? It was Peter. He was restored. And Judas was condemned to death. So ano pong connection nito sa Monday Thursday? Sa pag-aaral natin ngayon. Well, should we even celebrate it? Wala pong sinabi sa Biblia na malinang wag i-celebrate ito or i-celebrate ito. Wala rin namang sinabi na uh, wag i-celebrate bagos uh, it is a good thing to commemorate kung ano nangyari sa gabing iyon in a biblical manner. Kailangan makita natin. So yung commandments po na sinasabi in Monday, Thursday is the command first. 
to remember what Christ did on the cross, to live the gospel, that Jesus Christ broke the bread, signifying the death of his body on the cross and the pouring out of his blood through the uh, drink na binigay niya sa kanyang mga disipulo. Pero hindi po doon nagtatapos. To commemorate Christ in the uh, yung pag-administer po ng Lord's Supper is baliwala po yan kung hindi natin makita yung buong gabi. Ano bang nagtranspire ng buong gabi yun? Hindi lang po sila kumain. Hindi lang pinakilala ng Panginoon sino yung kanyang mga anak talaga na hinilang, sino yung mga disipulo niya na susunod sa kanya kahit pa may uh, pag, pagtalikod, uh, panandalian pero ililigtas niya ultimately at sino rin yung hindi susunod sa kanya. Hindi lang po yun ang pinakita doon pero pinakita rin po kung ano yung commandment ng Panginoon na ibigin natin ang bawat isa. The Lord's Supper is very important in showing God's love to us. Na hindi naman niya kinakailangan. Hindi naman siya required para ipakita ang kanyang pag-ibig sa pamagitan ng kamatayan ng anak niyang si Cristo Jesus sa krus ng Kalbaryo. But in His love, itong love na to ay specific and uh, efficient and um, para sa kanyang mga anak. Hindi para sa buong mundo na magsasabi na uh, mahal ko ang Diyos pero hindi naman siya sinusunod. Ito ay reserved for those He has chosen from the foundations of the earth na magmamahal sa Kanya. At ano po yung inuuto sa kanila na dapat sundin? Ito po. Tignan po natin sa John chapter 13 sa verse uh, uh, Two onwards, the evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter and said, to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part of with me. Nakita po natin dito, hindi lamang yung pagpartake sa pagkain ng uh, tinapay at ng, ng uh, saro ng Panginoon ang pagiging parte niya. Uh, in John chapter 6, sabi, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you, ha- you have uh, no part of me or you will not be called my disciples. Ito naman, paghuhugas ng tubig sa kanyang paanan. Uh, sabi, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Magpapakita ito ng <laughs> kaibang personalidad talaga ni Pedro kung bakit siya tinawag na Pedro o Petra na bato, no? Medyo head, ano talaga siya, headstrong. Una, sabi niya, ayaw kong magpahugas ng yung kamay, signifying yung somehow humility na pinapakita niya na, ay hindi, Panginoon, ikaw ay aking Panginoon, ba't ako magpapahugas sa'yo ng paa? Pag titignan natin, uh, make sense, no? Bakit ako magpapuna kaya naman? Pero hindi, makita natin dito, yung establish mo ni authority ni Christ. In verse 5, sabi, I'm sorry, in verse 4, uh, sorry, <laughs> verse 3, Yan. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under His power. Alam niya ang kanyang katatayuan. And that He had come from God and was returning to God. Jesus Christ is not doing this to gain the favor of His disciples. Hindi para magpabebe, hindi para magpakita lamang ng pagpapasikat or pagpapainbabaw. But He know what He's doing. Wala siyang kailangan patunayan. But He's doing this to signify ang paglinis ng Panginoon in our submission to Him. Yung submission natin sa Panginoon na handa ba tayo magpakumbaba sa ating mga kasalanan? Handa ba tayo na magpasakop sa Panginoon? Na huhugasan niya ang mga karumihan? Ano mang karumihan natin? Handa ba tayo na ito i-expose sa Panginoon at isuko sa Kanya at magpasakop sa Kanya? At ito yung sinisignify. Pero kakaiwan si Pedro ng no? response ni Lord. Eh kung gano'n naman pala, eh di buong katawang ko na linisan mo, hugasan mo. Sabi ni Christ, hindi na kinakailangan. Bakit? Kasi malinis ka na. Ikaw ay aking hinirang, ikaw ay aking minamahal, ikaw ay malinis na. 
at hindi ito pagpapakita ng pagligo lang na physical gaya ng inis ng mga tao pero ibig sabihin meron ng paglilinis sa kanilang meron ng pagpili sa kanilang Panginoon they've been purchased by the blood of Christ even before the actual atonement on the cross so, paanong paraan po ito po yung tinatawag nating saved on debit before or sorry saved on credit before the crucifixion parang sa Old Testament times those who believe in him were also saved through the death burial and resurrection of Christ prior to the happening of the crucifixion crucifixion bago pa mangyari ito nanampalataya na sila at ganun din po sila Pedro meron silang pananampalataya kay Kristo though ang pananampalataya nila hindi perfect but they have been given by Christ that faith yung pananampalatayang mananatili kahit bumagsak ay mananatili mapepreserve sa pamagitan ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoong Heso Kristo kaya ito po ang sabi ni uh, Panginoong Heso Kristo sa kanyang anak ay sa kay Pedro ang sabi po uh, sa verse 10 Jesus answered Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. Hindi po pinag-uusapan dito kasi naligo ka na yung mga kasama mo hindi. Hindi po. So verse 11, For he knew who was going to betray him and that was why he said not everyone was clean. Nandun na po ang paglilinis ng Panginoon sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya nila sa gagampanan ni Kristo na pagliligtas. Parang hindi nila maintindihan. Maring hindi nila makuha at that point. Pero pagkatapos po ng outpour ng Holy Spirit, they understood what was uh, what has transpired sa buhay nila kasama ni Kristo. Naintindihan nila kung anong mga tinuro ni Kristo. Naintindihan nila yung pananampalataya nila. At ito po ang naging dahilan kung bakit po sila hinirang ng mga anak ng Diyos. Kung bakit sila hinirang bilang mga apostol ng Panginoon at disipulo ng Panginoon. But the commandment is very clear. Ang sabi po sa verse um, 14 ng John 13 Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Ano po? Example po ito ni Christ, commandment ni Christ to love one another, to serve one another, to submit to one another. And this commandment goes throughout His body, through the churches. We should not be self-serving. We should not look for the benefit of our personal gains, but for the benefit of others. Not to self-edify, but to edify the body of Christ. Ito po ang naging tema from this day forward na mahalin natin ang isa't isa. And that is the greatest commandment ng Panginoon. To love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And how can that be also the greatest commandment if we love one another? Because in 1 John, tignan po natin, uh, sa 1 John po, paano na-connect yung greatest commandment sa pag-ibig natin sa isa't isa? 1 John chapter 4, Punta po tayo sa verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God shows His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has given us His Spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has uh, sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on God's, on the love of God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. 
we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So sa madaling salita, the greatest commandment is uh, displayed in a physical form by loving one another in Christ Jesus. We cannot say that we love God. We cannot say that God has saved us. We cannot say that we are Christians, we are His disciples, if we cannot love our brothers and sisters. So ito po yung fulfillment ng commandment ni Christ. Ang pag-ibig sa Diyos, yung uh, commandment na Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Makita natin dito yung uh, uh, pagka-apply, eh hindi lamang sa hindi natin nakikita na Diyos, pero ito'y pagpapakita ng pag-ibig sa ating mga kapatid. And the world will know that we are His disciples if we love one another. Makita po natin, napakaganda po ng commandment ng Panginoon na ito. na hindi po tayo dapat mag- sa walang bahala. Nadadaan na naman itong Monday Thursday na hindi natin nakita yung significance. Pero makita po natin na tayo po ay niligtas ng Pernoso Kristo. Tayo po ay nagpartake ng kanyang katawan at ng kanyang dugo through our uh, faith in the finished work of Christ. Not literally drinking His blood and eating His body, His flesh, but by partaking of that Uh, faith, uh, belief na si Kristo lamang ang makapagliligtas sa ating mga tao, sa ating mga kasalanan. And the application of the commandment is to love one another in Christ. So let us remember and be reminded na kung tayo magsasabi na tayo ni Ibig ni Kristo at tayo nagmamahal sa Diyos, nawa ito may pakita natin by loving one another. How can we love one another? sa pamamagitan po ng ating pagrasakripisyo sa ating mga sariling desires by not putting ourselves first loving by building each other by edifying one another in the context of the church at katawan ni Kristo ang pagpapalakasan sa isa't isa yan po ang pagpapakita natin pag-ibig sa isa't isa hindi lamang sa maubuting gawa no? hindi lang yung kindness yung mga ganyan hindi lamang sa pagpapakita ng Uh, generosity hindi lang po yun pati po sa pag-rebuke pagpapakita rin po ng pag-ibigyan dahil sabi po uh, open rebuke is better than hidden love at ang pagpapakita po natin ng pag-ibig sa kapwa natin ay by not tolerating their sin kasama po yun and we build each other up by teaching each other the truth of God's word So mga kapatid, dito po yung ating kinakomemorate niyon. Hindi lamang yung Lord's Supper, pati yung paghuhugas ng paa ni Kristo Yesus sa kanyang mga disipulo. Huwag natin kakalimutan na tayo magpakahumble, magpakababa, magmahalan sa isa't isa. Pagkat merong inibig ang Panginoon, malalaman natin, how can I know if I'm one of those people who who was chosen by God, na niligtas niya ako, talagang genuine ako. Matthew 7, sa chapter na yun, sinabi, You will know them by their fruits. Pag pinakikita po natin na tayo sumusunod sa utos ng Panginoon, pinakikita po natin na tayo nagmamahal sa ating mga kapatid, yun po ay pagpapakita na tayo po talaga ay anak ng Diyos. So hindi lamang sa utak na pupunta yung ating pinag-aaralan, hindi lamang head knowledge, kundi ito ay napuput into practice. Uh, maraming salamat sa inyong mga oras at uh, nawa ay uh, ito po ay magsilbing aral sa atin at uh, sa pag natin, sa ginawa ni Kristo sa sakripisyo, eh, ma-remind tayo na meron siyang commandment binigay sa atin. And that is to put into practice what He has taught us and that is to love one another. God bless you all and let us pray. Father, You have loved us with an everlasting love. And we pray, Lord, na sa panahon ngayon na aming pinag-aralan, Lord, makita namin, Lord, that we have the responsibility to put into practice what You've taught us. To be reminded of Your command. to remember the finished work of Christ, of your Son. Maalala namin, Lord, yung ginawa ni Christ at manampalataya kami na yun lamang makapagdigtas sa amin, Lord. At dalangin po namin sa aming pananampalataya that it would translate into action that we must love one another 
unahin namin ang kapwa namin, hindi ang aming mga sarili. Especially, Lord, in the fellowship, Lord, magpalakasan kami, Panginoon. Huwag kami mag-tolerate ng sin sa kapwa, Lord. But, mangyayari itong mga bagay nito in the view of love. Ang motivation naman namin na yung pag-ibig mo, Panginoon, sa amin. Allow us, Lord, to sacrifice more, not to gratify ourselves. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day.